<clears throat> obviously um, a game where we were outplayed, outcoached. Um, and again, this is why Minnesota is one of the top three teams in the league right now, is their execution at the offensive end, their tempo, their screening, their physicality. Um, it's just really been impressive all year to watch um, against everybody. And, uh, um, you know, they're stepping up without even their best player now um, and just continuing that. They have such good pros in that locker room that they are very professional about what they do. I thought um, that we responded out at halftime. Um, you know, we held them to 12 baskets in the second half, and I thought there was there was a more of a desire, a fight, um, a physicality that we started to match more. Obviously, it's hard to keep that level up the whole game by Minnesota, so we were benefits of a little bit of that. But you got to give our players credit. But you know, the question is, is why why did it take you know take, taking a haymaker in that first quarter to respond when all we talked about is their execution, their physicality. Um, and again, our, our turnovers against a very good defensive team crept up tonight. Some were self-inflicted, some were, um, you know, just simply uh, dif disappointing reads because it's the third time we've played them and, and we knew some of the things that we wanted to look for and we couldn't execute to what we had planned um, trying to go into this game. Uh, coach, um, the team kind of shot, struggled a little bit from uh, three, three for 20. Uh, is it just a matter of shots not going down, or is there something about those looks that, you know, kind of caused that percentage to be so low? Yeah, I mean, I'll go back and look at the tape. I thought we took a, a, a few difficult ones off the dribble, but uh, we have to convert and make open threes. Um, as I tell you, last game, uh, on uncontested shots, um, around the top of the key and even just inside um, straight away, you know, inside the arc uh, above the foul line. We were two for 20 on uncontested shots the other night. So another night where, um, again, you can throw out some of the difficult, maybe off the dribble shots that are lower percentage, but we missed a lot of uncontested shots again. And this is a make or miss league. You have to make shots. Um, these these guys, you know, I've got to stay confident. And you can tell it's in their head right now that they're missing um, uncontested shots. You know, I, I don't know if we dropped, but we've been in the top four in shot quality this year for a lot of the season, meaning we are executing two quality shots. Um, but this group's got to be able to make those. Now, sometimes, you know, the adage, right? There's a reason you're open. Some of these guys are being left open on purpose because um, the opponents and the coaching staffs that are scheming can see the unconfidence that some of them have, and they've got to shoot their way out of it. There's no way to get out of a slump. Then, um, then they've just got to keep shooting, and I've got to work to see if they're good shots, they're quality shots, and are we executing? Um, they just get, they have to find some confidence within themselves. They got to see it go through the hoop. Coach, after the Mercury game, you essentially told me and everybody else in here that if the team didn't play well, they could lose by 20 plus against the Wings. I mean, final box score you didn't, but at some point you're down by 25 in the third quarter. I mean, how does this happen when you know that this is the possibility and you've, you know, inferred and, and preached that to the team? So, like, they know that worst case scenario, you can get blown out. Yeah, I mean, it, again, that's what they do to everybody. And that's how good their execution and tempo is. And I'm not sure we are ready for the physicality and fight. And as much as you preach it, they have to have the desire when they walk out there. Um, and again, you know, they, they just didn't have it tonight. It's my job to pull it out of them um, and, uh, and have them ready, I thought. Um, as the third time going into the game, first time at home, that we had a good game plan and an understanding of how they have hurt us in the first two games. But they just out, they outplayed us, they out executed us, and they certainly probably would, you would have to say, out coached us 
um, because no matter how much we talked about it, they, they did what we were fearful that they could do. Hey, Coach, uh, at one point, did you realize it was your confidence? And um, at least at one point in the game, did you know it was going to be a long night? Yeah, you know, again, the games, uh, this league is a game of runs. So I'm not sure I ever thought that we weren't going to make a significant run at them. Yeah, you know, I used a couple of early timeouts um, to try to challenge our team. Like we, we've got to stay con in contention now or it's going to get away from us. Um, you know, so I, I, w I was very hopeful that we could settle in and, you know, get let the game settle in, let us settle in and that we would make some runs. But obviously we went <coughs> down, um, you're down 16 at halftime, it, you know, the, the it, it's not insurmountable, but certainly that locker room, um, you know, is disappointed when we walk in at halftime. Hi coach, I'm Nayla Davis with FI 360. And after the game on Sunday, you mentioned that you're more worried about the team playing to their standards rather than the wins and losses. What are those standards that you emphasize to the team that you hope to be transferred into today's game? Yeah, I think t today's a great, um, you know, learning lesson for us because you know, it's a copycat league, right? It's a 24 second shot clock. A lot of us run the same offensive sets, but no one's playbook mirrors ours more than theirs um, or ours mirrors theirs. Like literally all their high uh, run plays, we have the exact same plays in our playbook. Like literally when I tell you guys, we're running the same things that they're running. But you didn't have to sit out there and, and ask yourself who is running their stuff better. Crisper, more physical, faster, sharing the ball more. We were running the same exact type of plays. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great learning lesson for us that we can learn from them on, it's not plays, it's the execution of plays. It's the little things that go into those plays. They are so crisp. They, they run their stuff so hard. They are fast in short areas, which is always a, uh, a preaching point of me. We have to be explosive in short areas within our actions, and they are the definition of that. Their tempo is outstanding. It's, it's really fun um, to witness and, and watch them. It's not necessarily always fun to coach against them right now because of how well they're executing. Hey, Coach DJ from Infinity TV. Uh, we beat Vegas two times, and after uh, the second Vegas win, you were saying, you know, in the WNBA, it's funny like that, that sometimes you just have better matchups. Would you say, from your opinion at this point, that Minnesota is just the opposite of that, and they're constantly the, the matchup to beat for us? Yeah, it, you know, for us, um, you know, with a younger team, uh, that at times relaxes on defense when they think they're out of maybe a scoring action. Um, and you just have to have five people constantly um, engaged defensively and flowing to actions and moving towards actions when they're not in necessarily scoring action. If not, they just, they move you and they move you and they move you. Um, so, you know, this matchup uh, is difficult for us. You know, it's this league's funny like that. There's just matchups that are better. In Connecticut, um, you know, it was one of those things. I had a team that matched up well with M Minnesota. When I left Connecticut, I had probably, I think, I think I read this somewhere, the best career record against Cheryl Reeve. Right? And we have not won a game against Minnesota since I arrived here now. So that no longer stat exists, but um, you know we had you know we've had a bunch of success against them, um, but again those were really really locked in defensive teams in Connecticut, and I'm, I'm trying to build that here with that same defensive intensity. Coach, uh, you know you talked about the players and just you know things that they have to do and they have to figure out. Just as a coach, uh, like. Uh, how frustrated are you or what what things do you think you can do better to kind of get through to them to make sure that they're like not having a slippage and being where they need to be playing how hard they need to play and even like making sure they knock down these shots yeah the effort is the the frustrating thing right like again with the young and the building you know i've done this everywhere i've gone 
Uh, there's growing pains. There's nights where um, you don't play well. Um, it's just not your night. There's nights where you can get up it, and how consistent you can be like that. And when you're in the build is, um, you know, all part of it. So, you know, I know, you know, and again, injuries, illness, people in and out of lineups. Again, mm -hmm. Steph's our energy person. Steph has been in the starting lineup. All of a sudden now Steph basically has missed two games in a row. Um, and so we lose that toughness. We lose that extra passer. We lose that extra glue kid. You know, it's all part of it. And, but we, you got to keep stepping up, you know, when you have adversity. And so we had more adversity tonight. We get Azure back and going, but then you lose Steph. So again, my, more of my frustration is physicality, is toughness, is effort. Because those, those things, I, I don't want to coach. You know, I just want them to be consistent every night and we need them. Mm. You know, we talk about the margin in here a lot between winning and losing for us. Our margin is different than a bunch of teams um, in this league. And so you have to every night bring your toughness, your energy, your physicality. And we got out toughed, we got out physical tonight. Our energy wasn't as high as theirs in the first quarter, which set us back. And, you know, and then, I, you know, I, I obviously got out coached because I wasn't able to push those buttons soon enough. Mm. Um, you know, and again, they came, did, you know, they put their starters back in, they played, we held them to 12 baskets in the second half, we outscored them in the second half, but. You know, like, you know, that's just, you know, things you can talk and try to gain confidence out of players. But in reality, we, we need to talk about that first quarter and why was it the way it was. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.